temperatures are not supposed to dip. 31 tonight. Yep. Okay, so it was not supposed to be doing this today, but we have some ice and a little bit of snow falling. Uh, we're actually gonna come out here and actually do a video. So this is actually perfect for the video that we we're setting up to do, but uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Andrew real quick. She wants to show you guys the Forsythia. Wow, right, we're getting snow. We haven't had snow at all this year. I think it was just a little bit of what a, little bit of, what was it? A little flutter here and That's there. That's pretty much it. But you know, I am happy that there's a little bit of snow going on. But I want, before we head out to what we were going to do, we're going to cover some hydrangeas, guys. That's why Amber said this is a perfect video, you know, for, for that. Um, this is a forsythia, and I'm always showing it, guys. I only have this one big one, and I love this guy because we've had, uh, we've, we've had it for like maybe four years, going to five maybe, if I'm correct. Yep. And this is flying away for forsythia. It's from Proving Flying Winners. Machine. Flying Machine from, um, from Proving Winners. This forsythia, we've had, I, it just means so much to us because I've had it for so long already, and it was one of the first plants that Proving Winners, you know, sent us to review, and I actually kept it. I kept it. I left it in a in a container, and it worked out for our garden because our, our garden, you know, there's, we move around a lot, so we don't have a lot to show off in the garden. So a big piece like this actually does something. Um, even though it's a plant that loses all, you know, deciduous plant, it, it's it's great still in the winter because of all the texture and I don't know, it just looks so pretty with the stems going all over the place. And then of course in spring, you know, the first some of the first plants to bloom, and then later on in in um, when you know the growing season comes around, it's great to have it in the garden as a backdrop with all the greenery that it shows. And I usually move it to another place where we need a bit more greenery. You love flowers, I always say you gotta have that backdrop, and this guy does his job once he's done blooming. So just wanted to show you what to do with plants of these, you know, this kind of plants. Sometimes we don't wanna deal with them because they lose leaves in the winter, but they're so beautiful no matter what. So, so real quick, the forsythia is also a great measurement to, to when to uh, prune your roses. I know a lot of yes. people ask us about when to prune roses. Right when these guys start to bloom is a great time to prune your roses. And that's, that's normally true. what we do. Um, so in your area, whenever a forsythia blooms, because uh, obviously every area is different, the weather is different everywhere, but when these guys start to bloom, it's a good indicator to start pruning some of your, your plants in your garden. Now, why is this forsythia so, um, so special? It has huge flowers. They're more of a, they have more of a golden orangey color. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Um, that's one of the reasons it's so, you, you, you know, very special because of the way um, uh, the bloom is very, very big. I, I just love it. It's a favorite. There are smaller ones, which we hope to, you know, be able to add to our garden in the future. Um, so, with that said, I'm gonna I'm checking the weather because we were not supposed to get whatever you call this right now. It doesn't look <laughs> like snow that maybe what what would you call it's, this right it's, now? It's snow, ice. It's a bit some of ice. ice. Yeah. Okay, it looked more like snow a, a few it, minutes it started ago. Off as flurries and so now we're much. in the 40s right now here in Quantico, and we were not supposed to have just a bunch of rain this whole week at that for spring break for the kids. I know it's it's. I feel like we should have headed down south or something for spring break. Um, but we are going to get temperatures of 31. Um, that's below freezing for us here, right? Yep. Is it? Is that? It that's is, the. It is. So what? 30 around 35. You're supposed to t start taking care of things that are starting to bud up, that are going to um, put out flowers, so they don't freeze like the hydrangeas. Hydrangeas, the like micro macrophylla hydrangea, mountain hydrangeas. That's what we're going to do right now. We're gonna go ahead. I, I started noticing some of them are starting to bud up. I'm gonna take them over here to show them. The garden is yep. a mess right now, but I wanted to go and ahead and show you. I have them everywhere right now. I have this one on this side. This is tough stuff. It's a mountain hydrangea. And the reason I have it on this side is because we get more sun on this side. So around this time of year, when, you know, um, towards the end of winter, beginning of spring, I start moving hydrangeas around because our garden is very shady. Now I have it in containers for us, it's easier to move them where they're going to get more sun so they can get all the sun right now. That way, you know, they, they flower better. And then, you know, as <laughs> sun starts to um, be out for a longer time during the day and I get to move them back um, so they can do their, you know, 
what their thing. But as you can tell, they are starting to put on their buds. These are the type of hydrangeas that you don't want to prune at all. Even if they're new varieties, um, like a lot of the proving winners varieties nowadays, that um, they go ahead and do a reblooming, um, a second rebloom in the in the growing season, you still don't want to touch them. The only time that you're supposed to, you 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 know, that if you must give them a trim, is is around right right after they finish flowering. That's when you can go ahead and give them um, a pruning. But um, yeah, I'm. This, that's why I have this one over here. Usually I have it on the site where Ambrose is at. So let's go ahead and head over to the side of the garage. That's where I have many of the other ones. Now we did get rid of other hydrangeas, other macrophylla hydrangeas, because we're moving. I kept a few. I'm still wondering which ones we're gonna keep. But we're, I think we're gonna go ahead and bring out the, the covers, what we ordered, so you guys can see um, what we're gonna use to cover them. Real quick before you go. Oh. Your awesome boots. <gasps> yes. I'm styling right now, guys. Look at that, Isaiah boots. They've been, they, they went ahead and sent these beautiful boots not long ago. And oh, they're, they're called the what, the, the mud? These are women's uh, mud boots. We'll, we'll put the name on there. I call them my gardening boots. They're just beautiful. I've had my eye on these. Um, I do have more of the Isaiah boots and I love them so much because as you can tell, we have a very, here in Virginia, it rains quite a bit. It snows. There's this weather that just crazy and usually muddy, um, especially when it snows a lot, it gets really ugly and kind of dangerous outside to yep. walk around. And, and these guys, the, this is what I want to show them. This, even though they're beautiful, this is what matters, guys. Look at that, ladies. Yep. I love that. That is good grip. They're just beautiful. I, I was, I had my eyes on this because of the red right here. I have very chunky legs, so I love that these actually fit my legs. So I love that. Yeah, so and, and we just wanted to share them. Am Ambrose actually has some too. Yeah, I got some that I'll be showing later, but all these boots do have a lifetime warranty and we do have a discount code, guys. So go ahead and check that out in the uh, description below. You can get a, I believe it's a 10% off. Might be 20%, but, uh, just check out down below, you'll see the discount code. Let's go ahead and head and outside. Before, because I know a lot of you ladies ask me, are they comfortable? They are super comfortable, especially these ones. I love them and they keep your feet warm. So go ahead and look for those. All right, so now it's actually snowing now. Uh, it yeah. was ice and now it's actually so, snowing. Sorry if we we're in a rush, guys, in this video, you know. So real quick, what I want to show you guys is a lot of questions that we receive is how do we protect our plants, uh, specifically our hydrangeas and roses. Now with the roses, it doesn't get cold enough here to actually damage the roses here. So we don't really do too much protection other than mulch and stuff like that. Yeah. But the roses will absolutely do fine in this zone. The one thing We're that won't- We're zone 7B, yeah. so we don't worry about that. So the one things that won't do great is hydrangeas, like macrophyllas and mountain hydrangeas, because those buds do tend to freeze, especially when you get a weather like this and overnight it's freezing because those new buds are starting to emerge and then yes. mid-March or early March like it is now and then sometimes even at the end of March we start to get this cold frigid temperature and it freezes those buds and they just fall off and we don't get any buds but yeah this is what we uh we went ahead and got these are some uh freeze cloths that we got from Amazon you can see that in the link below where you can buy these I think I bought five of these for about 15 bucks um so they're they're not really expensive they do quite well and they do sell bigger ones, they do sell smaller ones. Um, you probably might need a bigger one for a hydrangea that's possibly in the ground, but for these that are in containers, these will do just fine. Yes, so these, while well, Ambrose is doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and explain. These hydrangeas, this one is a macrophylla, this one over here is a mountain hydrangea, actually tiny tough stuff. I can't remember the, which one this one is, um, but they are down hardy to zones five. Um, Prairie Winners even has some that are down hardy. You can find any, you know, you can find some that are down hardy to zone four. Um, you know, you would think they'll be okay, but like Ambrose was explaining right now, as soon as you start seeing all the tender, um, you know, the, the buds coming up and stuff, that's still going to end up getting um, damaged. And we don't want that. And last year, that's what happened. Um, we had a very cold winter last year and that damaged a lot of our hydrangeas we didn't get to show them off a lot we only had like a few flowers a few blooms on some yep. um it was pretty sad not to see the garden you know in full bloom all the way how we're usually used to so they um, do have seeing the, it they do have these ties on here where you can tighten up and kind of this crimp, right here crimp the bottom the only thing that's very difficult Ooh. with these is just exactly what i did there is trying not Be to careful. break 
any of these stamps when you're covering up your hydrangea and getting the bag around it just right. That's good though. That but, actually, yeah, that's going to go ahead and help. I didn't, I was, these are the ones that are the tallest ones from all of them. Yeah. So I'm very happy with that. So we're gonna go ahead and um, I guess we're gonna wrap it up here. We just wanted to show you yeah. how we protect them. Um, I don't know if you can have the camera out like this. It's, it's getting pretty yeah, it, bad it, it's, right it's, now. It's, it's pretty thick now. You see that uh, it's starting to actually snow. So it's, it's, you know, it's pretty cool because we weren't expecting any snow this year. This is gonna be our last year here. So yeah. it's pretty awesome that we're getting this. Um, probably gonna miss the snow, cold weather. Yeah, we are, but you, I mean, yeah. I, I did want it to snow before we left, like a real good one, like last year. Um, that's why we were super prepared this yeah. year. Now, if you don't have this, um, you can go ahead and use um, blankets or whatever uh, you have in hand. Yeah, burlap, um, uh, you can use burlap, you can use blankets, you can use these if you get them. Um, these are pretty beneficial because you can reuse them. Um, I would go with this because we did use burlap last year and it didn't help us. Yeah. I don't the, know why the, it didn't help. It didn't help for us. Yeah, the burlap kind of it completely soaked through. It didn't help as well. Um, but now yeah. if you also have we have a garage. So if we didn't have enough, we could put some of them in the garage. Yes. You know, but right now how we have so many things going on in the garage. It's just like, you're, you know, we're yeah. cleaning up. We didn't want to deal with that. So let's see what happens. With, we're, this is the first time we're actually going to use these, this yeah. type of covers. Yeah. I mean, you, you see them throughout all the garden centers and some of the big box stores also when they cover up their stuff, they use drop cloths like this and it definitely helps to keep those plants alive during these cold temperatures. But um, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Just a quick video on how we're keeping these hydrangeas nice and warm throughout these frigid temperatures. Uh, you got anything else? No, any questions, leave, you know, the, uh, leave down in the comments below. Sorry if we are not explaining everything to, you know, Yeah perfect detail it's snowing we need to wrap up the video but um yeah leave any any questions down below all right so that's gonna do it guys give this video a like subscribe if you're not subscribed we'll see you guys in the next video bye